Hey guys, welcome to the 13th Autodesk Inventor tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're finally going to finish up looking at constraints. And the first constraint that we're going to be looking at in this tutorial is the coincident constraint. And the coincident constraint basically just means that a point will always be forced to be along a path. And by path, I mean either a line or a spline. So we're just going to go ahead right here and just draw a quick spline. Doesn't really matter how long it is. And then we're also just going to create a point. Alright, so basically what I mean by stay along the path is if we were to apply the coincident constraint to this point and to this spline right here, it basically just means that this point would always have to be on this spline no matter where. So we're just going to go ahead and apply that constraint. So we're just going to go up to this coincident constraint right up here, select this point, and then just go ahead and select this spline. And as soon as we do so, we see that that point immediately jumped to this spline. And of course, this point must always be along this spline. So if we go ahead and try and move this point right here, we see that it moves the spline with it. And that's because this point must always be along this spline. And if we move it like up and down, it doesn't really move it much because it doesn't really matter at which point it is on this spline, it just must be on the spline. All right. So you can do this with any point. So it could be the center point of a circle or an arc or anything like that. And you can do it with a line as well. So if we were to just go ahead right here and draw a line and then just draw a circle, we could apply the coincident constraint to the center point of the circle and to this line so that the center point of the circle would always have to be on this line right here. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Select the center point of this circle and then this line and we see that it just moved that circle right onto this line because the center point must always be along this line. And if we just go ahead and try and move this circle, we see that it moves the line with it because this circle must always be on this uh, line right here. And we can move it way out here, and that's because if this line were to go on for forever in either direction, the center point of this circle would still be on the line. You just have to be careful of that though. It may not always appear to be on the line, but it is. Alright, so that's pretty much all there is for the coincident constraint. The next constraint that we're going to be getting into is the collinear constraint. And that's pretty straightforward. It just basically means that two lines will be moved or be on the same line. So if we were to just go ahead right here and draw two lines, uh, one line here and another line right there. If we were to apply the collinear constraint, it basically just means that both of these lines would be moved to be on the same line. So we're just going to go ahead right here and apply that collinear constraint, which is right up here. And we're just going to select this line and then select this line. And we see that now both of these lines are on the exact same line. So if I just go ahead and select the first line, we see that, yep, they're indeed two different lines. It's not one solid line. And you can apply this to any line. So it could be the edge of a rectangle or I mean the side of a rectangle or anything like that. So if we were to just go ahead and draw another line like out here or something, if we were to make like these two lines collinear, it just means that this line and this line would just be along the same line or on the same line. So we just apply that collinear constraint and we see that, yep, now both of these lines are on the exact same line. So we highlight one and we see that they are indeed two different lines. They are just on the exact same line. All right, so that's pretty much all there is for the collinear constraint. The last constraint that we're going to be getting into is the uh, concentric constraint. And the concentric constraint basically just means that two circles or an arc in a circle or something like that will have the exact same center point. So we're just going to go ahead right here and uh, create one circle and we're going to create another arc. And we're just going to make sure that right now they just have two different center points. All right. So let's just say that we want uh, this arc to have the exact same center point as this circle. So we don't want this circle to move, but we want this arc to move to be, have the same uh, center point as this circle. So we're just going to go ahead and apply the fixed constraint to this circle right here so that it cannot move this circle since we want it to move this circle. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and select that uh, concentric constraint. And we're just going to select this circle and this arc. And as soon as we do so, we'll see that it will move this arc so that this center point right here is right on this point right here. So since it cannot move this circle, it must move this arc to have the same center point as this circle. So we select it, 
And yep, as you can see, it just moved that arc to have the exact same center point as this circle right here. And we could do this with another circle as well. So if we wanted to have three circles that have the exact same center point, we could do so. So I'll just create a really small circle right there. Then apply that uh, concentric constraint to this circle and this circle. And we see that now this circle, this arc, and this circle right here all have the exact same center point, all thanks to the concentric constraint. All right, so that's pretty much all there is for the concentric constraint. And before I end this tutorial, I just want to explain one more thing. Um, all of these constraints right here, these are considered geometric constraints. And by geometric constraints, it basically just means that there's no numeric value. So there is no numeric value for um, a circle and a line being tangent, or uh, two lines being uh, parallel, or something like that. So these are all considered geometric constraints. This, on the other hand, is another type of constraint, a dimension. That is a numeric constraint. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I just wanted to clear that up on constraints. So see you guys.